Hi everyone, I'm glad you're here. I wanted you all to meet Zach, but we probably shouldn't disturb him right now. He's trying to study because he has a math test coming up. Though it seems like our friend Zach can't seem to focus on his work. He's being very fidgety right now and doesn't look too happy. Oh no, it seems like Zach did not do well on his math test today. He seems very upset and angry, but doesn't know how to properly express his feelings. Zack has always had difficulty with school and controlling his emotions. You know, it seems like Zack is facing the challenges that an individual with ADHD would face. Why don't we take a further look into what ADHD is and explore a way to help Zack alleviate his symptoms. ADHD, which stands for Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder, is a medical condition. A person with ADHD has differences in brain development and brain activity that affect their ability to pay attention, sit still, and control emotions. ADHD can affect a child at school, at home, and in friendships. The common symptoms of ADHD are inattentiveness, hyperactivity, and impulsivity. Inattentiveness means the child is easily distracted, not able to follow all directions, and loses track of things. Hyperactivity is when the child gets bored easily or has trouble staying still. Finally, impulsiveness is when the child interrupts others and has intense emotional reactions. Brain scientists have found that deficiencies in specific neurotransmitters underlie many common disorders, including anxiety, mood disorders, and anger control problems. Neurotransmitters are chemical messengers that brain cells use to communicate with each other. Each type of neurotransmitter carries specific information. In ADHD, there are less than normal levels of two types of neurotransmitters called dopamine and norepinephrine in the brain. Dopamine plays a role in how we feel pleasure. It's a big part of our ability to think and plan. It helps us strive, focus, and find things interesting. Norepinephrine is involved in alertness and arousal, along with mood and ability to concentrate. The deficiency in the neurotransmitters are found in four key regions of the brain which are the frontal cortex, the limbic system, the basal ganglia, and the reticular activating system. Let's take a look at how each region of the brain is affected by ADHD. The frontal cortex. This region orchestrates high-level functioning, maintaining attention, organization, and executive function. The deficiency of norepinephrine within this brain region might cause an attention, problems with organization, or impaired executive functioning. The limbic system. This region, located deeper in the brain, regulates our emotions. A deficiency in this region might result in restlessness, inattention, or emotional volatility. The basal ganglia. These neural circuits regulate communication within the brain. A deficiency in the basal ganglia can cause information to short circuit, resulting in inattention or impulsivity. The reticular activating system. This is the major relay system among the many pathways that enter and leave the brain. A deficiency in the reticular activating system can cause inattention, impulsivity, or hyperactivity. Just like adults, kids with ADHD are often given medications to control symptoms. They may also have therapy sessions to help get organized and stay focused. One ADHD treatment that doesn't require a prescription or a visit to a therapist's office is exercise. There has been a lot of research done to confirm that regular exercise does not only provide physical benefits to individuals, but also promotes psychological well-being. This is because physical activity can trigger several physiological events in the body. There has also been evidence that suggests that exercise can help those diagnosed with ADHD. Exercise has a positive impact on cognitive performance. Evidence shows that acute aerobic exercise can increase the levels of dopamine and norepinephrine in the prefrontal cortex of the brain. This region is key to cognitive functioning. When dopamine levels have increased, the dopaminergic system is activated, resulting in improved sustained attention and decreased levels of impulsivity. To add on, several studies have shown that following a regular exercise program for a longer period of time will result in long-term improvements in cognitive functioning. Exercise also has a positive effect on the limbic system because it helps regulate the amygdala. In the context of ADHD, the amygdala regulates the fight or flight response, which produces feelings of stress and anxiety. Increasing levels of the neurotransmitters in this region will help kids regulate their emotions and reduce impulsivity and volatility. Incorporating fitness goals into your daily routine can have several other benefits too. 
For example, relieving stress or anxiety, reducing compulsive behavior, enhancing your memory, and improving your skills of planning and organizing, known as executive function. To incorporate exercise into your daily routine, studies show that exercising for 30 to 40 minutes a day, three to four times a week is beneficial when including it in your treatment plan. The best strategy is to exercise in the morning and take the prescribed medication about an hour later when the immediate focusing effects of exercise begin to wear off. Try to do these exercises outside as it has been shown to have greater benefits. It doesn't have to be a vigorous workout. Activities that include moderate intensity such as swimming, running, or skipping will help them a lot. Here is an example of an attentive schedule you can easily incorporate. Choose a day in your week and set it to be the day you take the scenic view or a walkway when you take your child to school. Your weekends can include a more active segment where you can plan a 30-minute workout that includes dancing to warm up and cardio-based activity to get your child's heart rate up. You can customize as you see fit. It has been found that exercise programs that require the use of complex motor skills can elevate norepinephrine more drastically than regular exercise. Examples of physical activities that require the use of complex motor skills include playing sports or learning martial arts. Exercise should be used as a tool for kids to help manage symptoms, along with the treatment plan that your physician recommends, whether that includes medication or psychotherapy. So Zach and his parents can consult the doctor to learn more about a specific treatment plan he can follow to help with his ADHD, and he can also follow an exercise program to help alleviate his symptoms too.